Hello, brothers and sisters. Uh, this is Lenny Clark. It's January 23rd of the year 2017. Um, I'm doing this YouTube from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, I wanted to do a YouTube, a quick YouTube on the subject of the CIA uh, and uh, the incoming president-elect, no, well, not incoming president-elect, now President Donald Trump. Uh, essentially, I wanted to uh, look at some of the reports we've been seeing about Donald Trump and how he uh, regards the CIA or what he might do and things going on around it. Then I wanted to uh, go over an excellent book published in 2011 by Jesse Ventura, uh, former governor of Minnesota, pro wrestling star. Um, his book, 63 Governments, I'm sorry, 63 Documents the Government Doesn't Want You to Read. Uh, but first to start off with Donald Trump. Uh, there were reports I'd read in the Wall Street Journal, and they've been around before, that the new person that he's trying to get installed, uh, appointed as the new CIA director, former four-time congressman from Kansas, uh, Mr. Pompeo, uh, was going to have major reforms of the agency, big-time reforms. Um, and I thought, well, how would the CIA react to that? And then, you know, and I'm sure you've probably read other things. You can put in your reflections on the bottom below this uh, in the comments, this video. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm looking at it as objectively as I can. Yes, I am a progressive, so I know that you still probably won't find favor with my analysis. Nobody's totally objective, and I don't claim to be. But uh, with the last appearance, uh, the speech that Donald Trump gave at the CIA, headquarters in Langley, Virginia, in front of the wall for officers who lost their lives in defense of our country. Um, he was criticized roundly by the former director, Mr. Brennan, uh, for politicizing, you know, giving a heavy, heavily uh, politicized speech in front of this solemn wall, a uh, memorial of fallen officers. Um, the crowd was said to have been divided uh, up front were the VIPs, directors, you know, former directors, one director, and, well, at least people that were in charge of the CIA, top managers, and some maybe spies, I guess, <laughs> that could not be seen. Um, and then out in the general audience were employees, uh, people that, you know, the nuts and bolts of the organization who run it day to day, that type of thing. So uh, during his speech, it was reported that the uh, the uh, normal, the so-called regular employees of the CIA were wildly applauding him, cheering him, and Donald Trump gave reassurances. It is said that he was not there to attack him. He uh, admired them, respected them, and he they were going to essentially get back to what they were doing uh, to protect the security of the United States. Whereas up front, the VIPs and the management were not clapping. Um, now, I can take that as two, I can take that at least two ways that I know of. One scenario would be their management and it's not probably becoming of them in their opinion, the culture of the CIA to be applauding and clapping at the president. Um, or on the other hand, uh, they weren't clapping because they disapproved of what he was saying. Um, now remember, it's being floated around that, well, it's out there, Pompeo and uh, Trump want to make some big time reforms in the CIA. In other words, people who have been with the CIA a long time, the leadership, um, they might be, you know, given a, a one-way ticket out of the CIA. You know, just get out. We're going to put in new members, people you've never heard of. So that that's the other scenario, and uh, it could have been a combination of both. But I tend to believe that um, the last scenario, I believe that Trump is going to turn the CIA into his own personal uh, vendetta organization. Now you can say, well, Lenny, you have no evidence of that, and that's fair. Well, I guess unfortunately we have to wait and see. Now you know that I'm not condemning all of the individuals who serve their country, but if you read the book The Devil's Chessboard by uh, Mr. David Talbot, well-respected journalist on Alan Dulles, one of the founders of the beginning people of the CIA right after the OSS went out of existence, you will find that Alan Dulles, there's convincing evidence he was one of the architects, if not the architect, 
behind the assassination of President Kennedy. And yeah, I know the mainstream media doesn't want to talk about that. Another book you can read uh, is a Mr. Weiner. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it's his first name is Tim Weiner, but it's W-E-I-N-E-R. It's called Legacy of Ashes, and it's a history of the CIA. And believe me, uh, it is not a flattering book at all to the CIA and really shows all the mistakes and how inept it is. Um, so that's mainly you know, what I wanted to state on that. Uh, now, does this put Mr. Trump in danger? Um, I mean, I will say this, as you already know, I'm sure, President Kennedy had decided to disband the CIA and probably send back the intelligence work back to the Pentagon you know, basically paraphrasing something to the effect that he was going to break it into a thousand pieces. And, of, you know, quite coincidentally, which I believe wasn't a coincidence, uh, he was assassinated. And wouldn't you know it, the man that he fired over Bay of Pigs, Alan Dulles, was put in the Warren Commission, on the Warren Commission, to investigate the man's murder. So there you go. That's really objective for Lyndon Bain Johnson, Baines Johnson. So this isn't about Democrats or Republicans here, okay? Lyndon Baines Johnson was as corrupt as they came. He was a Democrat. Um, he placed on the commission the enemy of President Kennedy to investigate who murdered him. So, yeah, right. So, anyways, that's what I, I feel that maybe either those who cannot stand Donald Trump are doing everything that they can to bring him down, but he is so popular amongst uh, many middle class uh working class people uh, you know and especially now with the signing of the T you know he's going to get rid of the Trans-Pacific Partnership and all that that they are nervous about doing anything to him that could be a possibility um, and uh, the second scenario also actually it's part of the first scenario is Mr. Trump is going to be able to kick out these people before they have a chance to kick him out do something to him and he will then take iron-fisted control of this organization uh, and th this organization will do all of his unconstitutional bidding and Pompeo this former Tea Party congressman has stated that he supports mass surveillance of the American people in, in violation of the Fourth Amendment and you can all and my conservative friends you can say well if you're not doing nothing wrong why are you worried well then you know Thomas Jefferson Benjamin Franklin all of our forefathers, I guess, then, you know, why did they put the Fourth Amendment in? It's not if you are doing something wrong or you're not doing something wrong. You have a right to privacy. There's no declared war. True, the Congress passed a resolution to basically give politicians in Washington uh, a blank check, which is now killing our democracy from within because it's killing our Constitution, our constitutional rights. So you can say that, you know... If you're not doing anything wrong, there's nothing to worry about. I personally think that's just illogical and unconstitutional. You, you know, if you're going to go by the Constitution, then you just you just can't ignore the Fourth Amendment. Now, the book I wanted to talk to you about, this book called 63 Documents That the Government uh, Doesn't Want You to Read by Jesse Ventura with his assistant author, uh, Dick Russell. Here's, you might have seen it already. I would strongly suggest going out and getting it if you get a chance. And no, I'm, I'm not, I don't work for Mr. Ventura, even though I highly respect him, um, because he's not gonna BS you. He'll, he'll just tell you what he feels. Um, because I, I, I would like people to get basic books with basic information because of the fact that I'm going to talk to you, what he has in his book here is an official act, I believe it was passed into federal law, uh, the nickname for it is the the internet kill switch, okay, and that means they could cut off the internet, and as far-fetched as it sounds, they passed this law in 2010, all before the Russian scaremongering and all of this crap, okay, so if you get a hard copy book, then at least you have a copy of it, in addition, I believe that independent bookstores will be targeted as well so and I hope I'm wrong I mean I don't want the internet to be taken away I hope that he doesn't totally become the tyrant that we're worried that he will be but anyways so this book is very op apropos uh, the 63 documents the government doesn't want you to read it's got five sections in it um, it was published in 2011 with President Obama 
uh, the first part, it's got five parts. It's part one, our scandalous post-war post -war history, the CIA's secret assassination manual, uh, U.S. assassination plots against foreign leaders, uh, let's see here, U.S. Public Health Service exposed Guatemalan prostitutes, prisoners, soldiers to sexually transmitted disease, the CIA's Project Artichoke and MKUltra, Operation Northwoods, uh, Kennedy's plans to withdraw troops from Vietnam, what really happened at the Gulf of Tonkin, U.S. capabilities in chemical and biological warfare. That's just the beginning, part one. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them because I don't know how much I can record, but I'm going to go over some things that I think are more apropos today. But I'm going to continue to go over his book, and I do urge you to get a copy. I'm sure you can get it on Amazon. 63 documents that the government, let me see, make sure it's right. 63 documents the government doesn't want you to read by Jesse Ventura. Um, I'm going to go over some things that are more apropos to us right now, brothers and sisters. And even if you're conservative or liberal, I believe that all people who believe in liberty, uh, human dignity, and freedom uh, are united in that we don't want to lose what's left of our constitutional democratic republic. Um, let's see. Let's start off with uh, the Internet Kill Switch. It's on page 194. Uh, in part three of this book. I'm going to go there right now. 194. Okay, almost. All right, I found it. Okay, it's called Protecting Cyberspace, an Internet Kill Switch. Well, it's it's and framed in a question. Quote, kill switch, end quote, with a question mark. So Jesse Ventura is saying this is a possibility, and here's why. And this is his writing and his author's writing. A bill protecting cyberspace as a National Asset Act of 2010, this is an actual law, a uh, bill that was passed, was introduced in the Senate last June by Joe Lieberman, so that probably would have been 2011 or 2010. Note particularly the part under Section 4, quote, authorizes the President to issue a declaration of a national cyber emergency to cover critical infrastructure, end quote. Would this give Obama or any future president the right to basically pull a, quote, kill switch, end quote, on the Internet, question mark? Could you say, could say a huge leak of classified documents serve as justification? Okay, what he's talking about is Julian Assange. And this book came out before Edward Snowden, okay? Because the bill is so long and convoluted, I only include part of it. Here also is a summary of the bill written by the Congressional Research Service, a well-respected nonpartisan arm of the Library of Congress. So this actually passed. It's called, Google this brothers and sisters and you can tell me more about it if you want or your friends. Protecting Cyberspace as a National Asset Act of 2010. Essentially the President could declare, let me see if it's highlighted, but the President could declare a cyber emergency and uh, by doing so, well it says, authorizes the President to issue a declaration of a national cyber emergency to covered critical infrastructure requires the president to then notify the owners and operators of the infrastructure of the nature of the emergency and then he goes on uh, the bill goes on to basically say they go to the internet providers and say you have no choice you got to stop now uh, so if you're in Arizona or Alabama or wherever you're at if if president Trump or whoever's president deems you uh, you know saying there's a cyber emergency there goes, you know, our communication because one man decides it. And if you don't think he doesn't have the generals that support him in this, think again. Um, I do believe, and if you've ever watched, uh, I forgot now, it was something 12 days in May or 11 days in May, something, it had Burt Lancaster, the crazy general who tried to have a coup d'etat, you know, who said in the name of the Constitution of Freedom, he was going to take, you know, take over the civilian government. Believe me, watch that movie, you know, go look at it on YouTube. Um, essentially, the Smedley Butler character was a colonel, and that was played by Kirk Douglas, who had to try to stop it and warn uh, the constitutionally elected people that this general was going to do this. So, you know, Donald Trump, man, this dude will do that. I mean, come on. His generals, his people, they've already said they believe in mass surveillance of the people.